Hello there! I hope you are doing great and happy. Welcome to our lesson 3.1 about verbal communication. Thanks for joining. This time, we'll be talking about linguistics, mainly about articulatory phonetics. This is the study of language, specifically its structure, um, development, and relationship with other languages, or how the speech sounds are produced in the vocal track. And that's about syntax, the branch of linguistics that focuses on the structure or of phrases and uh, sentences. Again, as what we are talking about with our uh, previous discussions, the communication can either be verbal or non-verbal, and the verbal communications can be written or spoken. The voice is one of the most important elements in oral communication and all of the articulators in the vocal track are working together to produce a sound or a single word as the lungs provide the in and out of airflow needed for a voice or to produce a sound the air is then pushed up through the windpipe or the trachea to the voice box or larynx and finally to produce resonance or sound the articulators inside the mouth, the nasal cavity, the teeth, our tongue, our kissable lips, <laughs> work together to shape the air to make the vibration in different ways to make a sound or better say, that's our voice. Now, let us talk about the manner of articulations. This is the way that the airstream is affected as it flows from the lungs and out to the nose and the mouth. Let's differentiate first the consonants and the vowels. So, um, what's the difference between the consonant and the vowels? Consonants involve some constrictions of airflow, while the vowels do not have constrictions of airflow. The linguists describe the consonant sound by using three criteria. The voicing, the placement of articulation, and the manner of articulation. Let's talk about this more. The voicing refers to what the vocal folds are doing. When air passes through the open vocal folds, we call this voiceless sounds. When the air passes through the vibrating vocal folds, we call this the voice sounds. You can feel the difference between the voiced and the voiceless sounds by putting your hand right here where your Adam's apple would be located. So uh, produce these two sounds in succession. S, z, z, z. Which one produces the vibration? S, z. We should feel the z sound produces the vibration, so it is called the voiced sound, whereas the s do not produce the vibration, so it is a voiceless sound. Now let's go to the second part, which is the place of articulation, where in the vocal track, the constriction of airflow takes place. Bilabial sounds are produced with both lips, like p, b, m. Labiodental sounds are produced with the upper teeth and lower lip come together, such as f, v. Intidental sounds are produced with the tongue in between the upper and the lower teeth. Alveolar sounds are produced with the tongue at or near the ridge right behind the upper front teeth, such as t, d, s. Palatal sounds are produced at the hard palate or the roof of the mouth, such as sh, y, y. The velar sounds are produced at the villum or the soft palate, such as k, g, and the glottal sounds are produced at the glottis of the space between the vocal folds, such as h. Now let's move on to the third part of our discussion, which is the manner of articulation. The way the airstream is affected as it flows from the lungs up out to the nose and the mouth, or how the airflow is constricted in the vocal track. 
Nasal sounds are created when the velum is lowered, allowing air pass through the nasal cavity. This is when you completely block the airflow through your mouth and let the air pass through your nose, such as mmm, mad, clam, mmm, no, and man, mmm, going, and funk. Stop or passive sounds result from a complete constriction of airflow um, followed by a release of air like nasal um, consonants. The stop consonants occur when the vocal tract is closed completely, the air is quickly uh, built up behind the articulators and then released suddenly such as uh, p, purse and rap or uh, b, back and t, tab and rat d, dip and uh, back k, kite and back g gap and get while nasal and stop consonants involved a complete blockage of the vocal tract fricatives involved only a partial blockage of the vocal tract so that the air has to be forced through a narrow channel the fricative sounds produce when the tongue approaches but does not contact with the place of articulation causing a bottleneck in the airflow. Uh, this gives a sound of a friction-like quality, such as f, fra, and cuff, v, vine, and have, f, thick, and bath, v, the, and rather. Affricate is a result from a sequence of stop plus fricative, in rapid succession. So the uh, affricate, such as ch and uh, j, we have j, jam and uh, badge and ch, chick and match. Lateral sounds are produced when the tongue blocks the middle of your mouth so that the hair has to pass on both sides of your tongue one or both sides of your tongue and the tongue itself moves a lot to shape the sound such as luck approximants are sounds produced when two articulators come close together but not quite close enough to create air turbulence just a very very little constriction of air so little you're like just gliding, such as wet or Howard or uh, yes. All right. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. We have discussed about voicing, place of articulation, and uh, manner of uh, articulation. So that's it for our lesson. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed and understood it. And uh, we will see each other in our synchronous classroom. Ciao.